the World Cup taking place in England over the coming weeks and asked the question, is it time that a Pacific Island nation could finally upset the balance of power and hoist the trophy aloft at the end of the tournament? Well, I think there's, you know, there's, there's some really strong teams this year. Um, you know, if I look across the, the board of this tournament, I think it's the most equal sort of playing field that we've had in a very long time. If I look at Tonga and Samoa, you know, they've really come up. It's been five years since the Tongan national team captured the imagination of the Rugby League world and took International Rugby League to the next level after a number of players who were eligible to represent Tier 1 nations, including New Zealand and Australia, opted to play for the Tiny Island nation instead. And we saw how well that went, not just for the individuals and for the team, but for the growth of International Rugby League as a whole. And now, as we approach the 2022 World Cup, it appears Samoa are ready to be the next nation to take that step after a number of NRL players, not only Samoan players, but people who played Origin and may have been eligible for kangaroo selection, are already opting to represent their home nation. Look, it's exciting with the squad we've got. Yeah. You know, and to be compared to Tonga is certainly very humbling. They've, they've been marvellous. They've been the leaders in the Pacific, so to, to be compared to theirs, you know, they've done a great job, so it's humbling. But, you know, we've got some work to do yet. Yeah, Australia's always been strong and, and England's been strong as well, but... But the Pacific Island nations are the ones we need to watch out for. Tonga have once again named a very strong squad and they've been developing continuously since 2017 despite not having too many opportunities to play international football. But you know, obviously having our first session, full session this morning is tough. You know, when you, you know, six days or five days out from an opener. But, you know, we're excited and we're looking forward to the, you know, next Saturday night. Yeah. Quarter final, semi final, win the whole thing. How far can you go? Oh, I hope so. <laughs> but you know, talk, you know, talk doesn't equate to results. And you know, we we need to keep working hard at training, you know, which we have. Um, we need to get some combinations going and then build from there. But I've got no doubt, whatever we do this weekend, we're going to build on, you know, for the rest of the tournament. Um, I think we will get better as the tournament goes on. So how difficult has it been to prepare? for this tournament, given that so little international football has been played? You know, our preparation hasn't been ideal, but I've got no doubt throughout the tournament we'll do, we can build and, and put in, do something special. And then there's the Samoan team. Now, Samoa didn't make too much of an imprint at the last World Cup, but they've been able to kind of tap into the spirit that Tonga did prior to this World Cup, and they've had a lot of players pledging their allegiance to represent the nation, including the majority of the Penrith Panthers' backline, Josh Papali, and Junior Paulo bringing up the middle as well in a very imposing forward pack. And they've also got teenage sensation Joseph Suwali'i, who turned his back on Mel Meninga at the 11th hour to represent Samoa. This is probably the strongest Samoa team we've ever seen going into a World Cup. How much of an opportunity is there to inspire the next generation so that these Samoa teams are stronger and stronger in years to come? Well, I think um, these guys that represent Samoa in this World Cup have got a, a fantastic opportunity to you know, to inspire Samoan young players, men and women around the world. I mean, the Samoan backline, <laughs> uh, extraordinary, you know, nearly the Penrith backline, isn't it? You know, so they're going to be a hard team to beat. Uh, to be honest, I've got to... Um, my good mate, the captain of Samoa, uh, Junior Paulo, is um, leading Samoa this year. And everyone looks forward to the, the kind of Pacific Nation type teams because they're there, you know they've got this tradition of um, throwing the ball around. You know they're all real big athletes, so there's a lot of big collisions, and uh, so they're all generally exciting games. One of my best mates actually is uh, for Manu Brown. He's playing for Samoa at number nine. It's spine tingling for the, their prayer or their their song or the hacker or what before the game. It's it's a, some atmosphere, and I think that's what what most of rugby league or, or even rugby union supporters, you know, they they really enjoy those moments. Um, he's been picked for Samoa, so he's had a, a long long road back, but he gets to represent his um, his culture again, and uh, I can't wait to see him play. Probably probably the um, the Samoan and Tongan teams that obviously um, have. Some of them uh, have um, said no to obviously Australia and New Zealand. They just come and represented their, um, their obviously their, their backgrounds and well, um, young Suwali of course, you know, playing fullback, 
been, been offered the job of playing fullback for Samoa. I desperately wanted him in, in my footy team, but it didn't work out that way. But you know, I don't. I'm happy for him because that's that's you know that's ancestral ancestral nation that he wants to play for. You know? um, so I, I see some excitement. I'm looking forward to seeing him play because he wants to play fullback. You know, for his club, and he's got James Tedesco in front of him. So I'd be really interested to see how he handles that uh, on the international stage. To see them um, do that, um, obviously. That means a lot to them, or the, the, the countries that they're representing. So um, to see them, I can't wait to see them to go out there and, and see uh, how much passion and, and, and uh, pride they have um, for that jersey. Traditionally, a lot of uh, those guys just op opted to play for Australia, but they, for some reason, and they've, they've wanted to go and represent their own heritage, the, the Australian-based guys. So oh, you've got Tonga who've, who've strengthened and Samoa massively and, and of course Fiji were in our group so yeah it's going to be interesting to see you know who ends up in the semi-finals out of those guys. Just the squad that they've brought together um, it looks very similar to what similar to what Tonga did in 2017 World Cup so I can't wait to see how they go and especially the first game against England will be good to watch. It's great interest I'll be watching obviously the, f the first game against them in the, in the English you know so it's going to be really 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 interesting the England side have got a really strong experienced footy team who you know understand the international game really well where you've got a young Samoan team at, you know full of brashness and excitement going up against them so it's going to be interesting whether experience or really talented youth youthfulness is going to win. But one thing we do know about these Pacific Island nations is that all the players are on the same page and they are passionately into doing the best that they possibly can for their country and I think this is a huge gain for International Rugby League. It's a huge boost for the World Cup after a couple of years of delays. And I think there's a very good chance that it could turn one of these teams into the fairy tale story of 2022. But ultimately, for all of the speculation, we're gonna find out a hell of a lot more when Samoa kick off their World Cup against the hosts England in what promises to be an absolutely exhilarating clash. Remains to be seen though.